Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Father Bill Verbreich, and I welcome all of you who are watching to our back to school night, which like so many things this year is done in a very different and unusual way. What I would like to do is just start with a prayer that I used as part of our Holy Spirit Mass when we uh, called together the students and our faculty and uh, began in the tradition of all Jesuit schools to have calling on the Holy Spirit as we begin. So let us pray. Generous God, as we begin this school year, grant us the continuous help of your spirit. Fill our lives with gifts of hope and peace that we may respond to the challenges and opportunities of this year with generous hearts and open minds. May we always be grateful for your loving care. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Before I turn it over to, uh, to Greg, just uh, one of the challenges I put forth for the student body and for the faculty, and I really do it for the whole uh, community this year that as we begin, that uh, we be our best. And I said, be our best here now together and dream big. And if we try and keep that sort of as a mantra, I think we will certainly respond to the grace of the Holy Spirit and we will have a very successful and wonderful year. So again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for uh, sending us your children. And I now turn it over to our principal, Mr. Van Slambrook. Thank you, Father Bill. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for spending time with us this evening, or if you're watching this on, a, um, on the recording, either way, thanks for taking the time to join us and to get a good start to the year and to, to, to learn about some of the many things we have going on for your children at Provuf. Uh, we're thrilled to have them back. It's, um, you know, there's, there's so many blessings about it and, and a lot of joy in it. And of course, there's a lot of challenges and newness in it as well. So we want tonight to be a little bit of a, a presentation of some things that are just informative that we want to give everybody updates on that everybody needs to know. Um, we want to give a little bit of, of overview of a few things. Uh, they're just kind of things going around, on around the school. And um, to give you a chance to ask some more questions. We've been doing these question sessions uh, all through the summer. And we've really uh, enjoyed the opportunity to connect with you all in that way. And we miss the regular back to school night. Everybody in the halls saying hi to all the parents, greetings, handshakes, hugs. Uh, as always, uh, we're, we're missing those kind of things this year. But it's good to spend time with you this evening and, and here at the beginning of the year. So thanks so much for joining us. I'll give you a, an overview of what, how we're going to structure this. We've got from six to seven o'clock. Uh, I'm going to go through the, these topics with you. Again, a mix of practical and just updates on what's going on. And um, then we will do the, the live Q&A portion at the end uh, with until we answer the questions or until it hits seven o'clock. Hope that you can uh, have a chance if you wish to participate actively during this session. So several ways to do that. We encourage you if you have questions during the session to use the Q&A button on Zoom. You can type those in anytime during the presentation in the middle of when we're talking or, or after it's Q&A time. And uh, Mike is gonna help me to kind of moderate the questions when we get to that point. And any of the three of us here on the screen, Father Bill, Dean Adams, or myself might end up answering a mix of them. Also uh, tonight, what we have in place of the usual when you get to meet each teacher and go through your child's schedule, um, we have welcome messages and information for every one of your teachers and classes on portals. And so I'd encourage you to uh, log on to portals, go through and access each of your child's classes, read the introductory information there. If you have any questions, you'll see teacher contact information, or if you'd just like to personally touch base with each teacher, you can do that through their contact information on those sheets. Those, um, those welcome pages should include information about the class, about the content of the class, about uh, things you need to know about communication methods, and so on. So it'll give you the same kind of introduction to each class uh, that you get on the usual back to school night and the opportunity to connect. And then from some of our key areas around the, the academic programs and, and other student programs around the building, um, we have uh, some slideshows available for you in the link, uh, the links that you were sent in the email today. Uh, from our counseling departments, from community service and campus ministry. There's information about those programs that we think everybody would, would benefit from knowing. So I encourage you to use that. Uh, you can find those on that email, or we've also set up a website for this, which is brabuff.org slash BTSN, back to school night. So you can find any of those links, as well as the uh, this 
recording to this presentation. If you, uh, if you need to come back and, and review any of it, it'll also be on rebuff.org slash BTSN. So again, welcome. We're going to start with um, kind of what's on everybody's mind, I think, first is our, our COVID safety procedures. Uh, we have uh, talked about these four things a lot, both with, with you over uh, the recent weeks and months, as well as with your children uh, over the past couple of weeks that they have been in school. As you heard, we spent our launch days um, focused as well as introducing them to the classes, focused on these four areas that are key to safe reopening. Um, and I, I included this picture in front of you. This was uh, one of my favorite moments of the school year so far, which gives a little illustration, uh, certainly of, uh, of the kind of procedures, distancing and, and so on that we, we have in place. All those students are, are still in masks uh, with, a, with a group of that size, even outside. Um, that was our um, for opening of school mass that we call the Mass of the Holy Spirit in Jesuit tradition. It was a, uh, a beautiful morning. I took that photo from up at the top of the football press box. And just, you know, after all the, the weeks and months of work uh, towards reopening that we've been through, it was so gratifying and such a blessing to be able to gather in that way. And um, Father Bill, as he mentioned, his uh, words of theme for the year um, were inspiring. And our student speakers, uh, Emily Doring, Eli Franklin, uh, Brian Howerson, all very inspiring as well, and picked up on those themes and great role models for our younger kids. So we were blessed to do that. And it just kind of illustrates, you know, we're having to do a lot of things to, to implement these procedures all around the building. And really so far in our, our hybrid system with 50% of the students on campus at a time, uh, it feels like it's a, a very safe reopening environment as far as schools go. Um, I think, you know, we've been able to, with the screening process, our students have been very consistent and have really quickly got the drill as they come in to school each day of holding up their phone to show us the green screen. They'll continue to do that every day. Our faculty staff are all doing that every day as well. Uh, masking has been a very, very good uh, cooperation with that by the students all through the building. Uh, they only remove their masks to eat, of course, and if they're outside and can get six feet of distance with, from each other. Um, and, and again, very, very cooperative with all that, and we really appreciate that. Uh, the distancing is something that we're constantly having to remind everybody about, and this is the toughest part whenever groups of people get together. So you might have noticed uh, if you drove by the school today, we've moved some picnic tables around to try to facilitate that better, to try to spread students out when they're outside. Um, they've, they've done a pretty good job at pickup of keeping their masks on at least and um, keeping distance when we remind them. Same with the cafeteria, uh, when they take their masks off in the cafeteria and in the classrooms when they're eating, you know, they're supervised and they're reminded regularly. You know, we need um, in the cafeteria, just two to a table on the corners and in the classroom, making sure they keep with their six feet. Uh, it's a constant effort and you know the, the benefit of it and you know the payoff is as as you probably mostly heard um well we did send out an email about it last week when we had some positive cases in the building since everybody was uh, at least six feet apart in the classrooms you know that really minimized the need for anybody to quarantine because everybody there was no close contacts in the building when they were just around in classrooms and, and cafeteria and so on so that's the benefit of the hybrid system uh, we're, we're giving students a lot of reminders about that and, and they're working with us and we're working with them um, and, then, and then hygiene, uh, lots of uh, materials and cleaning and procedures, as well as students wiping down everywhere they leave. They've been great about that as well. And we're all getting used to that. So there's our review of our key procedures. Um, and this leads me into, I'm gonna turn it over to Dean Adams. Um, obviously we rely on you as parents uh, to help us with the, this process, with all these things that the students need to be doing, and especially when they need to be out, which we're totally expecting that more and more students will need to be out during this time, and we're, we're ready for it, and then it's in a sense what we want. So we just want to make sure all of our procedures for that are clear as we get going. So Dean Brenda Adams. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for having me today. Uh, just a couple reminders, and some of these reminders would come whether this was uh, COVID times or just regular times. Um, this, this process that I want to talk to you about in, in your students' attendance is something I would need you to do even when we're at 100%, if we ever are at 100%. But you're, you're pretty much responsible for your students' uh, whereabouts and their attendance, and I just need to know where they are. You'll see on the screen here that there's an, we have an attendance line at school that's, you know, the, uh, somebody's phone number. My assistant, Madeline McKinney-Torres, is her phone number. She tracks everybody's attendance all day. And the help that I need from you is a little different than normal because if your if your student is going to miss class for any reason, even if they're at home and they're going to miss the class, you're, the teachers are still marking them absent. They're technically still absent from school. So if you call us and we know where they are, they had a dentist appointment or whatever the situation was, 
Uh, that's what I need to know. And I just need you to leave those messages on that attendance line. Let us know. Maybe he was sick and he couldn't attend class today. Whatever. Whatever the reason is, we just need to know because an unexcused absence comes with a lot of other things that are unnecessary and I would love to avoid if we can. Um, and you can let me know if you ever have any questions about that. Uh, th that same number would be used if your student had a dentist appointment and he was at school and he, you needed to pick him up at 1130. You would still leave a message on that attendance line and just let us know what time your student needs to leave. And he or she would come to the office, come to the dean's office, get a pass from Ms. Torres, and they would be able to meet you outside. You don't need to come in. You don't need to come to the door. You don't need to do any of that. Your student will meet you right outside at the time that you asked us to let them go. Now, if you don't call, we won't let them go. So just make sure you give us a, give us a call and, and let us know. And just explain to us what's happening and, and we'll, we're happy to work with you. I think that's it for that, Greg. Uh, these are the Indiana State Department of Health guidelines. Um, we've had a lot of questions about returning to school and close contact and when do we get to come back to school if we've been around somebody with COVID. And we just want you to know that we're not making these things up. Um, we're taking it straight from this chart as much as we can. And myself and Greg and Madeline Torres are, are doing most of this work and just making sure that we know exactly when your student should be back and exactly uh, the process they need to go through. And we just want you to call us and we'll talk to every person about it. Um, this chart is just, like I said, is exactly how we're gonna follow things, be it in your household, be it close contact outside, any of those things. If the, if the student was positive, this is how we would go about them returning to school and if your student was with them or near them. Um, I know contact is, is kind of a big deal and trying to figure out what sort of contact we should be you know, allowing it as parents. Uh, I don't think I have a slide, Greg, but uh, the, my, my next part is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, is you've probably heard some stories about some, our city schools, obviously, and then some schools around the country, but uh, what I've been telling your students when I have to remind them about things, about not sitting so close to each other, about, you know, backing up, about keeping their masks on, is that if we wanna stay in school, we all have to do these things. Uh, we all wanna stay in school, so we all have to do these things. Um, and that, that we need your help with that. Uh, you know, we, we would love it if there wasn't parties being hosted uh, outside of school because that's very, very hard to manage. I would never want to manage it if I were you. Um, and if you do allow your student to do those things and or go to those parties, uh, talking to them about what it means to be distant from people if they can and uh, do they wear a mask when they go there, uh, all of those things. But we definitely need your help with that. Um, those, those things are, are what are shutting down schools right now people having parties and it going through the entire group, it's shutting down schools right now and we'd really like to avoid that. Um, also, I've noticed a lot in carpools, whether that's coming to school or leaving school, and I don't know if, you're all, if all these students are related or not, but when kids are in carpools, especially younger kids with older kids that maybe are not family members, they should be wearing their masks when they're in the car. That's a really close contact situation in, in those cars. And I see five and six kids in there and I know they have to get home, I, I, I know that but you know, they wear a mask to protect each other. So I'd really like to see them putting those masks on in the cars and um, riding, you know, keeping them on until they get home, until they get back into your house. Uh, and we remind them all day, and I think this is you know, when they're at your house and, and your, your student has two or three kids at your house, just reminding them what it means to not sit you know, shoulder to shoulder, not, not have their heads super close to each other. You know, I'm telling them all day in the cafeteria and I know it is not natural for them. It's not really natural for any of us. Uh, so it, as much as you can help us and as much as you can re remind your students that these are our expectations and we want them to stay healthy and we want to stay in school. So thank you. That's it, Greg. Thank you, Brenda. All right, I'm going to talk for a minute about uh, the classroom uh, academics and uh, how the hybrid system is, is working so far in our uh, estimation for learning. Um, it is clearly a big adjustment for everybody. And by everyone, I include you, parents, I know. Um, I, also for our students uh, to adapt to watching a class from home online, trying to participate from home online, learning how to do that, keeping their schedule uh, when they need to get onto class at home. And really for our teachers, uh, you know, for any of you who um, have been teachers in the past or are teachers or have known teachers well, um, it, this is a bigger adjustment, I think, for our teachers than for anybody. Teachers are basically teaching students who are at home and students who are in front of them at the same time. Um, it is a big challenge and there's a lot of new technology to learn and it's big adjustments for everyone and everyone is working really hard at it. 
and I, and I really appreciate that. And we really feel like everybody has put their best effort in, their best foot forward uh, among all those groups I just mentioned, parents, students, and teachers. Uh, we feel like, uh, I put on the second bullet, adaptability and grace are the key. Grace for each other, patience with each other, understanding each other. Um, and we thank you for, for all that you've shown to us. Um, and, and I want you to know, uh, our students to know, our, our teachers are talking to them about this constantly, that they should know that, you know, I think they're, they're a little anxious about how this will go for their grades and things like that too, and for their learning. And that's understandable. And our teachers are fully prepared and going to give them as much grace as you could possibly give in this situation. Um, and you, you can expect that from our teachers. I know that's what's in their hearts. Um, I've talked with them about that a lot and they've talked with me about that. You know, we're really giving them a lot of flexibility. We're gonna do that. We understand this is a different situation. Um, so, so they're gonna do that while still keeping the learning expectations high and keeping the academic rigor up. You know, that is, that is our intention going into this and we're all learning a lot. Teachers are learning a lot from each other. There's a lot of collaboration going on around the building. Um, there's a lot of great uh, new technology being learned um, and, new, and new methods that we're talking with each other about a lot. I think um, when I look at, you know, we're just two weeks in and I kind of think, think of the, the academic piece going into this is like, we'll, we'll be able to assess it better after a couple of weeks of it. And I think that's how it's shaking out. When I say early assessments, I, I think of those first big projects or quizzes or things like that in classes um, that are often happening in the second week or maybe the third week. So that's, that's this week or next week. I think looking at that will tell us a lot. We'll be looking very intentionally at how students are doing with their learning, those usual measurements we, uh, we use and some new ones that, that we use now um, too in this scenario. So that'll tell us a lot. That'll be a good uh, data input for us. As well as uh, next week, we will do one of our feedback surveys. Uh, this will be to students and families. Uh, as you probably got used, those of you who are there in the spring, uh, to us doing on a fairly regular basis when we were doing home, home learning, we're gonna do the same thing just to reach out to you and ask specifically about the classroom experience and academic experience for your feedback on that as we uh, learn and adapt. So you'll get that survey coming as, as an email from me next week, probably early or midweek, um, so we can learn from, from your feedback there as well. But overall, I just, I really appreciate everybody's efforts with this. Uh, it's, it's a huge, huge challenge and huge adaptation. And um, we, we, we feel like it's going well in many ways. And I'm sure we still have a lot to learn too, and we will. Many, many people have asked me, uh, especially in recent days, I think, you know, what are the metrics that we're using and the ways that we're making the decision on how long we do the hybrid system uh, versus maybe moving towards 100%. We know that some other schools in the area are at 100%. People wonder about that. Um, so I've had a number of uh, conversations about this, a number of questions. So I wanna to try to lay this out as clearly as I can, just knowing that it, there's a lot of uncertainty to it. Certainly nothing I can promise about how this is gonna go two weeks from now. Um, you know, or, or one week from now, much less uh, any, any longer. Um, but so what we have going now, if, uh, this is kind of a review, I went over this in the last Q&A, is um, in uh, two weeks before school started, the Marion County Health Department uh, released their uh, directive about uh, high schools and middle schools uh, with the percent positivity rate as it was at the time, it was in the nines, I think it was 9.1, 9.2, at that time back in uh, late July, uh, the schools would be directed to go hybrid um, and there were some exceptions if it was a very small school or if they applied for some other sort of, uh, of waiver for other reasons. Um, we did uh, give our application of our 100% plan to them. I had a conversation with Dr. Kane at the time, uh, the head of the Marion County Health Department, who made clear that she wanted six feet, um, that we wanted six feet in between students in the classroom uh, and while they eat, uh, certainly during this time with the community uh, spread as it was. And so uh, that's what initiated our hybrid system. And again, as we've started school, I've been really grateful for that, really. You know, I mean, it was a tough decision in some ways, but I think the hybrid has been, again, a very safe way to reopen, um, a way that we can really get used to a lot of procedures uh, and feel good about the low risk of virus transmission within the school, and, and we've actually seen that bear out. So they still have this same metric out, and um, as you see on the, the graphic on the right, that number's fallen from, like I said, the low 9% to now the high sixes, and it's continuing to trend down. So uh, it wouldn't be surprising if within a couple few weeks, that number is down in that 5% range where it needs to be, where we would get clearance from the Marion County Health Department to, to be fully in person. Um, but you know, I can't predict that. That's just, uh, if the trend continues, uh, that's what may happen. While we are looking at that trend, uh, we're also of course getting input from our uh, medical task force who have been great advisors to me. Um, and so I'll continue to consult with them. And when they think it's uh, safe for us to go back to 100%, they are supportive of, of the hybrid structure we have in place now. Um, and you, some of you might have heard yesterday, there was a new piece of this puzzle, uh, the Indiana State Department of Health in, in the governor's um, 
press conference yesterday, he and, and Dr. Box from the Indiana State Department of Health said that they're going to release a new guideline for schools that's going to be similar to this one from Marion County, uh, but it'll, it sounds like it's going to include some more numbers in it besides just the one metric. Uh, we don't have the details on that yet, but they say they'll be out next week. So when that comes out, we'll consult with both the State Department of Health and the Marion County Health Department, as well as with our medical task force to see what that update means for us, if anything. If, if, the, numbers, if the numbers get to the point where um, we are allowed by these agencies, in a sense, you know, directed that we are okay to go back to 100%, then we have our decision to make of, you know, what kind of um, transition period do we want to get back to 100%. I can tell you that um, our, in school, um, our educators in school, as far as a, from an educational perspective, certainly would like to get back to 100%. Um, and while there is uh, still questions and concerns about whether the, we can manage that in a safe way, um, we lean towards getting back to 100% as soon as it is safe to do so. That's how I would put it. And so um, while I don't want to push it any further than is safe, um, I do want to move in that direction uh, as early as feasible. What we'd have to do is we'd have to find some more eating areas. We'd probably set up more uh, tables for eating in the gyms and so on. We'd spread out uh, the eating areas a little bit. We'd have to make some more plans. We'd probably adjust our PRT schedule um, for having everybody back in the building. Um, there, I don't want to speculate too much more about that, but we'd have to make some changes. We'd have to be ready for them. So we'd probably give uh, you know, a week or two window of saying, you know, on this date, a week or two from now, we're going to go 100%. So again, I don't know when that's going to happen. I can't predict it. I know that we are um, eagerly awaiting the day that we can be back at 100% with everybody. I know that would be a lot of benefits in a lot of ways. Um, and these are the different metrics and uh, consultations and advice that we're using to make that decision. Um, and I'll communicate with everybody about that very transparently as we, uh, as we go, as we get more information. Uh, a number of you have asked for, uh, we, I know we've published our hybrid schedule up through, through our first two academic cycles of eight days. Um, so through Tuesday, September 8th, as you see in front of you. And uh, I am gonna go ahead and publish the next two academic cycles, which take us to begin, the beginning of October, but with a big disclaimer on there saying that this doesn't mean we'll necessarily continue in hybrid all the way through semester. We'll make those decisions kind of one or two weeks at a time, as I just described. Um, but I'll put those, that calendar out there. So I know you do a number of you doing planning uh, for your own work and things like that. We'll have that in front of you. Um, and that'll be out there soon. I think we're going to have that ready to, to send out to everybody tomorrow. So uh, we will have uh, another two cycles of hybrid schedule for September published. Just know that that doesn't preclude us from maybe going to 100% during the month of September if the conditions allow. Okay, um, turning to some other uh, kind of updates and, and things happening around the building. Athletics and activities. Uh, we're really pleased that students have been able to still engage with the things that they love uh, outside of academics. Uh, we have a huge night tonight uh, of athletic activities. A number of you are probably listening to this on your phone as you're sitting or going to an athletic activity for your children. Uh, we're really pleased we were able to have you know, some spectators and a, uh, some, some limited crowd at uh, our first you know, big football game on Friday night and, and a lot of other uh, senior nights. We're doing our senior celebrations early this year just in case. And I think that's a good thing to do for those uh, students. And so a lot of enthusiasm by our kids that they're able to participate in athletics. Um, again, I, th I think the, you know, be opening up safely with the 50% hybrid helps us to be, be able to continue that as well as students doing the right things outside of school as well as inside. And our athletic department has done a great job with procedures on making that possible. You may have heard we're still doing a fall play. The fall play has been cast by Mr. Strader and uh, the um, fall play is 12 Angry Jurors, also known as 12 Angry Men in an uh, earlier iteration. The 12 Angry Jurors is our play for, uh, for this fall. And uh, we're looking forward to presenting that in early October. Students will be masked during the performance. We'll have, of course, some limited um, seating. And you'll hear a lot more about that as it gets closer. But we're excited to still be able to have theater activities uh, for kids. And uh, that's really important. Same with band, orchestra, and choir. We've been able to find distance and safe ways to still engage students with these activities. And, and, and we're really excited about that. Grateful to all those who have helped our, uh, our fine arts uh, teachers be able to figure out how to do that safely. And they've been really creative in uh, making that happen. So I'm grateful to all of them. In campus ministry, we still have retreats that are being planned. We have a Kairos retreat happening in September, of course adapted in terms of, uh, we have some limitations on some, some of the usual ways we're able to do it. 
but we still have uh, faith forming and faith uh, developing activities through campus ministry happening both in the school day around the building uh, opportunities for students um, as well as our retreats which are beloved by students these are still able to happen uh, our freshman retreat we're still planning for all freshmen that is the middle of october you'll hear more about that as it gets closer um, and we, we still have activities as well in service our students who are taking the community service class are still able to do so and mr klingler is setting them up with uh, safe partner uh, opportunities with the uh, in, in our partner agencies around the community and students are, are out there serving the community and, and we'd love to see that too so it's just great to see you know when you, what we wanted for this year as we come back where we knew there would be many limitations but we wanted the spirit to still be there and for the kids to still be able to love what they were doing and we have definitely seen that both uh, both in their classrooms and with their teachers and, and with their activities so we're gratified by that uh, equity and inclusion is uh, a really important conversation and focus for us this fall. And uh, you may have seen the email that came out just today uh, where we are beginning right as the school year starts to engage in this, it's called the 21 Day Ignatian Racial Equity Challenge. There's an organization called the Ignatian Solidarity Network, which is a great national organization that, uh, that, that puts together educational opportunities for kids around social justice. And they put this together and we're gonna involve the whole community in it. It begins on Monday. Uh, we will have some announcements about it tomorrow to get to get people um, you know ready, ready to go uh, and then on uh, Monday for three weeks uh, we're gonna have lots of things going on around the school so so look for those I encourage students to participate and parents can participate too this is something you can do at home sign up for you can click on the link that came in the email and have conversations with your kids about these topics really encourage you to do that uh, also you'll be seeing in our in-depth newsletter this evening we're thrilled to welcome a new director of equity and inclusion uh, her name is Ms. Kayla Storrs. You'll get a full introduction to her in that in-depth newsletter. Uh, she is awesome, and I'm really looking forward to having her join our team. She's coming from the University of Oklahoma, and she has a fantastic experience and background for this position and a heart that uh, it really matches the mission of Brebuff and what we're uh, trying to do to develop all of our kids. So all these efforts uh, are really trying to um, really move us forward on that journey towards um, be an equitable institution in, in every way in terms of the way that our students, faculty, staff, our whole community uh, is a part of it. And also in the ways that our students grow and develop, every one of our students developing uh, in uh, key values uh, as well as relationships uh, that, are, uh, that are an important part of what we need to, to be teaching kids at our school in 2020. I want you to know that we're also very mindful of the mental health challenges uh, brought out by various aspects of 2020. And um, we were gonna be talking with kids about this a lot. And uh, if you're not already aware of the resources students have available for this, you just have a few examples in front of you. And uh, Ms. Libby Pollack, our school social worker, welcomes anybody to contact her anytime, student drop-ins, parent drop-ins uh, via email or phone. Um, and she is a great resource for people, whether it's just to talk about something or to get referrals to, to things. Our academic counselors are all trained as school counselors. They're trained in mental health counseling as well. And they're great resources for kids and they know each of their kids and they can really help uh, kids with those conversations. So I, I'd encourage you to, to, to lean on them. And if you don't know this, Michelle Martin, um, who is also a French teacher, is a certified mindfulness instructor. She um, has a great depth in this and teaches uh, the class, is one of the, one of the two teachers now for this class. And she is uh, happy to be a resource for anybody um, who wants some ideas around mindfulness practices. So I put her uh, name and contact on here too. Uh, I just wanted you all to know that we're gonna be really thinking about this and, and trying to be proactive with students about this a lot this fall, because we know this is, uh, this is taking a toll on everybody. Um, faculty, staff, students, parents alike, and as a community, we want to be there for everybody. Okay, that's uh, the conclusion of uh, my organized presentation, and now I'd like to turn it to q and I'm going to stop the share, and I'm first just going to take a couple questions. What I did with the, the pre-submitted questions was to try to um, basically answer most of them in my remarks that I've already made, but there's a few I think that uh, I, I want to be able to respond to that I haven't yet. Um, question about um, the availability of teachers in office hours. Are teachers still available during office hours to get individualized help for students? 
And the answer is it's a little bit more limited and more challenging than it used to be, but they are still available. When students are in school, they still have their two PRTs. And what we've had to do is shut down the department centers for student access, which is how they're used to going to find their teachers. But the teachers have all figured out ways to position themselves around the building during free times and ways to communicate that to their students or just make appointments with students to still make themselves very available. So for instance, our math teachers during PRTs will spread themselves out around different classrooms, one teacher per classroom. They'll let students know where they'll be or this will be a geometry help room and there'll be a geometry teacher in there. Um, there are similar examples from all around the building. So um, I, I know it is more challenging than usual. It's a different way of finding your teachers than it used to be. I know our teachers are talking with students about that and are very open and available to them. They really want that to still be a strong part of the experience at Rebuff. And while it is more challenging now, uh, it is still there. Um, the other question that I have not addressed, I think, is what is the current status of winter sports? No change at this time, uh, as we are with, with all fall sports still continuing. Uh, at this time, we anticipate all winter sports will continue on schedule. Okay. I think, uh, as I said, most questions seem to be about this uh, hybrid versus 100%. So I'll tell you, I got about 20 questions and, and, and most of them were about that. And I think I've addressed them all in what I already uh, spoke about in the presentation portion. If uh, I'll say it now and I'll say it again at the end, if there are further questions that I don't address in this session or that maybe I think I addressed but you don't think that I did, please go ahead and send me an email or send an email to reopening at rebuff.org, either one, and we'll make sure it gets answered for you. Okay, I'm gonna ask Mike to join us here and tell me if there are additional questions coming in that, uh, that I should be addressing. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, one actually, um, before we, I send it over to you, Brenda, this, I'll have you answer this one. I want to remind everyone who's watching to go ahead and use the Q&A function if you have a question and uh, input it there and then we'll get it answered to the best of our ability. Uh, Dean Adams, um, what do you recommend freshmen do during PRTs and will there be clubs? There will be clubs that that's on tap. It's coming soon. Uh, most of those kids have already contacted me about and when I say kids, I mean the leaders of those clubs, typically upper upperclassmen have already contacted me about when to start those. Um, and we're just trying to go slow and try to get it off the ground, knowing that we only have, I mean, in, essentially kids might have to have two meetings on two, two days in a row uh, in order to be, you know, to get done what they want to get done and to have their passions and, and all those things, but they are coming and uh, the kids are super excited about it. Um, what should freshmen do during their PRTs? They should meet other freshmen. They should hang out outside. They should do their homework. They should go in the information commons and get their math homework done. Uh, they should see a teacher if they need to see them. Um, they should eat their lunch. Uh, they should do whatever it is that they feel like they need to do in that given day, depending on their homework or their, their class situation on that day. Another question. Um, I think I'm going to Take this one to you, Greg. Can students in the maroon or gold cohort temporarily, temporarily switch to silver and back? Um, I haven't addressed a temporary switch yet. I would certainly consider that if there's a specific reason and need for that. Sure, we can talk about it. We have just tried to make things as flexible as possible for that silver cohort moving back and forth. We understand and support and want to accommodate students who uh, feel like for whatever reason uh, that they're not comfortable with coming back to in-person learning yet. And so we have uh, the number of who's, some of the students who started in the silver cohort um, have stayed with it. Some of them have moved into the maroon and gold cohorts since school started because they felt more comfortable with procedures. Um, I believe we've had a, a couple students go the other direction, um, go into the silver cohort a couple weeks into school. And we're just very flexible with all that. That's what we tried to make our system, the, um, the online learning system, very flexible to, to accommodate any of those needs. So yes, any family who would like to explore the, uh, the switching of cohorts for uh, you know midstream, I guess you could say, is welcome to contact me anytime. And uh, usually we can make that happen. We'll, we'll talk about the need and we'll uh, make sure there's not any hitches to it, but that should be able to happen back and forth through the semester. Also, I should say, um, if we were to go back to 100%, um, that I anticipate still offering the silver cohort opportunity to, to learn from home online. And the reason for that, um, you know, even if they, they might be the only one most days, but we still want to have the online learning platform always available for students who need to be home quarantining and want to be able to keep up with class from home. 
that is uh, the other function of this system. Even if we're not in a hybrid, it's going to be there for students who are needing to be home for an extended period of time or are well enough that they can attend class and they're not going to get behind and we're going to be able to support them in that. Um, so those of you who are in the silver cohort know that if we were to go back to 100%, I anticipate you would still have that, that option to continue doing what you're doing now. Um, another question that came in that was specific to Kairos. Um, will Kairos in September just be for seniors? I'm pretty sure it is. Yes, I think the, uh, the September one is the first couple are going to be maybe one or two are going to be senior ones. I know things shifted a little bit the way things uh, sh shook out in the spring. Um, and we were trying to make it so it was all juniors, so all the seniors got theirs done, but I, I don't think we did. So um, I, uh, I, I shouldn't promise that 100%, but I believe that it's uh, all seniors for September. Brenda, do you know anything about that? Yeah, I'm 90% sure that it is. It's usually the first two are all seniors, and that's already been established. Uh, those lists are already made. So if your student needs to get on a Kairos list, just call Free or Sam, and they'll get them on there. Yep. Thanks. Uh, at this point, Greg, those are all the Q&A submitted questions. So uh, we'll do one last plea. If anyone has a question, use the Q&A function at the bottom of the Zoom there. And then uh, we'll just take a minute and wait for those. Uh, we did have a question come in from the chat. Uh, will the recording of tonight's session be posted? Yes, um, we'll post that on YouTube. We'll post it at uh, burbuff.org slash btsn as well. Um, and then we actually have another retreat question. Um, I'm thinking about uh, Colin Bree. No. <laughs> um, if someone, um, Greg, do you know, how, how do retreats work for freshmen? Sure, uh, so uh, in October, it's right smack in the middle of October. I believe it's October 14th. Uh, we take the entire freshman class on retreat together. That's what we've been doing for a few years now. So it's like a whole class experience. And uh, we are still planning on doing that uh, on October 14th. I believe we might have to split them into two groups. Um, I'm, I've not been involved in the detail planning of it, but I know we're still planning on the freshman retreat on October 14th for all freshmen. Um, and they have an experience that's led by senior leaders um, and facilitated it and you know, just, just time to, time, a lot of it is time to get to know each other better among the class, um, time to, to, to grow and reflect and learn some things uh, in the Ignatian traditions of spirituality and reflection uh, that's inclusive of all students. And uh, it is pretty much all just a part of their daily, um, that, that, that it's nothing you have to sign up for, you automatically go there on that day. So you'll receive more information about that as we get closer, as we have the, the plans finalized. And I wanted to add to that question on uh, retreats for freshmen that in the presentations that Mr. Vince Lambert had mentioned that are gonna be posted, they were in the email that were sent to you. There's a slide in the campus ministry presentation about freshman retreat if you're looking for some more details is there as well. Um, and I think, I think that's, that's all the questions. Great. Well, as you might have seen, my, uh, my, my son is uh, telling me that dinner is ready. He's, uh, he's an eighth grader for both class of 2025. I don't think he knew that I was not to be interrupted. So um, if there are no other questions, I, I just want to thank everybody for your time, for being here tonight, for being part of Brebuff. Um, we, uh, we are thankful for Brebuff uh, during this time, and I hope you are too. I'm thankful for all of your kids um, the summer. You know, one of the toughest things about the spring and the summer was uh, not being around all of your children. Um, I can speak for Brenda on that too. We, uh, this is why we do this job. So it is uh, really exciting and um, it's been great to be back with them. Despite all the challenges, we're thankful for this as part of our lives. Father Bill, anything to add before we sign off? No, I just wanna agree. It's great to have uh, people back in the building. Uh, that's why we go into education and we appreciate uh, all the cooperation, uh, you know, from the faculty and staff and from the parents. So we look forward to other opportunities and we look forward to opportunities when more people will be able to be in the building. So thank you all. Thank you all. God bless you. Have a good night.